of you were considerably younger, and I'm going to kind of point this question at Colette, but I know Sarah has an answer too. Did you ride with babies and small children? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I rode a lot with Jenny. Uh, this is my daughter. Um, and I started at that time, I had a Schwinn bike, and she was born in 1979. Six. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I put the little yellow thing back on the fender, and you know, she could barely hold her head up. So I don't think she suffered any brain damage. <laughs> and um, I didn't really ride that too much. And then circumstances came about where I was dependent upon my bike, and so I ended up getting something a little bit better. And um, well, we rode that though a long time. But then I realized, realized that I really wanted to do some touring. I got a little, um, I don't know, some little bike for her. It was a little red bike, and I uh, made her ride down to Lewis Park. She was five years old. <laughs> and so that was probably her first big ride. That was probably three miles. I don't know. I don't know how far it was. And then we moved up to a little Jeton bike that uh, Dan Beatty sold. She outgrew that one. And it, the next one, that one was a three speed and had handbrakes. And she must have been seven. Oh, before that happened though, I got a tandem. And it was a Fuji tandem. And she rode on the back. And we <coughs> went across uh, Kansas several times together. And then uh, we did a trip in Wyoming together. But then. I got the little Fuji bikes, and like I said, she outgrew one and went to the five-speed, she had that one. And on that one, we took a, a ride to um, Nova, Martha's Vineyard, and um, also um, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin, you were on that bike. Mm -hmm. um, and then she got a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And <laughs> and I did, and I haven't worn her out, but she's still riding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's, that's mm -hmm. and, and Jenna, your mom said something about your riding on the back, mm. and she was talking about what it feels like to ride on the front. So will you tell us about being a kid riding on the back? Well, on the back you can take naps because your mother is strong <laughs> and um, will carry you through on a hot day of biking across Kansas. So. Um, on those long days, I often would fall asleep on the back of the tandem and nod off, and um, my mother would have to wake me up through her singing and her creative games as a first grade teacher. That, mm -hmm. that came in handy on the long, long days of biking across Kansas and um, all the other miles that we traveled together on our bicycle. So Now, of course, you doubled the baby output, and you have two kids. That's, that's like having four kids instead of two kids, especially when it comes to riding a bike. Are you able to ride as much with your children as, as you did with your mom? Well, our garage is full of all bike products, thanks to Family Bicycle. <laughs> um, so we have the Wii Hoo and we have um, two Striders, and we have a Burley bike trailer. And we now have just recently, um, Aubrey is now on her own bike, never had to use training wheels, and she's now on a, a little bike. I don't know what it is. But um, very, very proud of herself for riding her own bike and not using training wheels and going straight from the Strider. She's four years old. She's almost five, yeah. She's four, she'd tell you four and seven eighths. But, um, so she's on her bike, and Gavin, my two and a half year old, cruises on his Strider. So um, passing down the love and joy of biking to fourth, fourth generation, yeah. And I don't want to leave out Alice or Sarah. Um, so would you talk about how much riding you did with your children when they were small? Well, uh, I have three sons and then I have a daughter. And my oldest son had a bicycle that was about this tall so that I almost needed a ladder to get on the thing. <laughs> and I would put a pillow uh, on the crossbar, <laughs> put my little girl on there. She'd hang on to the handlebar, <laughs> <laughs> and we would ride. Oh my God! And uh, uh, that was about the first bike that I used. And when I got off, I'd have to kind of jump to the side 
Otherwise, my husband would divorce me if anything serious happened. <laughs> and uh, then I got uh, a smaller bike, but I never could get used to the upright position because I was always <laughs> just far forward <laughs> on that other bike. And to this day, I have the arrow bars where I'm, I ride down like this a lot. Hmm. And how tall are you, Alice? Well, you mean when I was at my you? prime? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five two. <laughs> and did they might make bicycles to fit people that were five? Well, two? actually, um, not really, because mm -hmm. I eventually, for my twenty-fifth wedding anniversary, my husband gave me a custom-made bike, mm -hmm. and and I still have that bike. And Sarah, I know you <coughs> rode with children. Uh, yes. But my first bike came when I was probably eight. I am a, from a one of uh, 12 kids, and I had to beg mom and dad to get me a bike. And they said, well, if we got you one, you'd have to share it. Oh, I'll share it. I knew none of my siblings would ride, because they were lazy. So I had a bike all to myself. But my second one <clears throat> was when I had my uh, first kid. She was uh, under two, and I have a picture of it. My husband took a picture, and it is no helmets. We didn't know what a helmet was, <laughs> and a heavy, heavy seat for the child. And then I rode, and the first time I rode was with um, Sally. I went to the bicycle meeting. It was from the Johnson County, and it was with Sandy, uh, Yansky, Yansky, Sandy Yiski. I don't know if any of you knew her. Well, she was the head of the biking thing of the Johnson County way back. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the meeting. It was two and a half miles there with my child. And they said, well, they're going on a ride. And I said, okay, I think I'll ride just back home because I was booed. <laughs> I was ride with this heavy child on a heavy Go seat, like this. and it was a used uh, Schwinn, red. <laughs> <laughs> so your first bike, you, cl you classified uh, That was my was first bike with my bike. baby. The first bike I remember that I got <clears throat> had a horn on it. That's the only thing I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's jump to a little bit different question because this is the Women's Bike Summit, and I told them that you all have known each other a long time and that you've ridden together on many rides. Have you all ever ridden on one ride, one and the same ride at the same time? Maybe BAK or something? BAK, Louisiana? Uh, some of us. Where? You mean at the same time? Was it Louisiana? Where the, or Mississippi? Was it Mississippi? Or Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> Georgia? Did you we did that Georgia one too. too. We or did Texas? Georgia. Yeah. It wasn't, I wasn't on Louisiana. Okay, then it but was anyway, I was told, Is that where we washed our clothes in the dryer? Mississippi. And, yeah. <laughs> you washed your clothes in the dryer? Well, it was raining, raining and when they were very wet, and we had to hire this. I mean, this was uh, down in, uh, what was the name of that town where they fought for voting right down there? It was, um, we got a, a it, the wind was blowing really hard that day, and we had a place maybe five miles away or something. I can't really remember. And we like in a park, I think. Uh, yeah, in a park, and they had cabins or something. Yeah, and um, that dog that came up and bit your arm. No, that was that another was part of the story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, was at any rate, there was you were there to be this black man there, and this was back. I mean, we were a bunch of women. He was taking a bunch of white folks. White women. I mean, he could have been. Oh, yeah, bad things could have happened to that man. I mean, but this, anyway, we, we we went to that uh, that laundromat because we were drenched, drenched and we drenched. all took yeah. off our clothes and put them yeah. <laughs> in a dryer. Mm -hmm. and, Did you and yeah. No wonder he gave us a ride. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, it was a very dangerous thing for I know him to do it was at that at time. time. Yeah, it, but yeah. Well, yeah, I remember was. everybody in there left. <laughs> oh, and you were taking your clothes off? <laughs> no, because they were because they were black and they it was were segregated. afraid that oh. they'd get in trouble. Oh, they oh. didn't want us in there with them. Although you guys were in the wrong place. Yeah, they yeah. weren't. 
Right. But we didn't know it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we finally found our cabin, and we all stayed in one cabin. Remember, there were like ten of us in one little cabin. And all of our clothes were hanging over uh -huh. the cupboard yeah. doors, and right. anything that had a ledge on. And Bonnie clothes. then whips out this evening wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> and a hair dryer. And you know, I would ride with the bare essentials. You know, <laughs> and. And I thought, oh my god. You gotta gosh. look good. Yeah. <laughs> to get yeah. a whole other level. Yeah. At the did. park. Yeah. So I'm working on it. And Alice was another one. She always had this big hat. You know, she'd wear a hat to cover up her helmet head. <laughs> well, anyway, what, what, we're off the subject. I've heard you all talk about doing rides here right in town. And I, I guess I think that you did it during the week. Uh, and that somebody ended up doing some mapping of some of those routes that, why don't you talk about those local rides and how you developed routes through wow. the city. Well, we had two leaders, um, <clears throat> Carol Weingarten and um, yeah. Fran Schroeder. And they would go out, they were retired, some of us weren't yet, and they would tra uh, track it on their bikes and say this is so many miles and we'll leave at such and such and usually they were uh, at least uh, 40, 50, a lot of them were 70 miles mm -hmm. like every Tuesday and we had women on wheels have you ever heard of women on wheels? Wow! Wow! Well, <laughs> wow. wow! We were wow! Women on wheels and John Taylor <laughs> but, uh, it was fun mm -hmm. a lot of fun and we still use some of those Routes. That's yeah, right. yeah, that was my next question. Uh -huh. If you would tell us where you were riding in those days and how that's comparable and what remnants we might still be using riding these days. Well, one thing is leaving Prairie Village because we used to always meet at Prairie Village uh, shopping center there at Wade's and uh, you go down to Prairie Village on the weekends and it's just loaded with bicyclists mm -hmm. and it all started with mm -hmm. women Years on ago. wheels on yeah. Tuesday. Now they're called the Yacht Club. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a new No, thing. that's the fast group. I know. Oh, the fast group. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we, fast we aren't the fast group. No, I never been there. <laughs> and then another thing that we used to do uh, on Tuesdays was uh, go scary. tour things like Hallmark. You would. Mm -hmm. Uh, take a short ride down to Hallmark and go through the plant and everything and uh, that was wonderful. You got to know the town uh, a lot. So this was probably in the 80s now we're talking no, about? No, 70s. Still in the I 70s. think we're still in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got, we got, we got a long I might still be go. there. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you brought your supper with you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so how far approximately would you have to ride from a ride start in Prairie Village to get on the edge of town back in those days? Uh, about uh, Metcalf, well, about 103rd and Antioch. It, it, that used to be a farm road out oh, there, yes. and they used to have uh, um, plums, the wild plums growing mm -hmm. along there and eating the plums. And Midland Drive was a country road. Mm -hmm really fun country road no traffic when we went to Olathe we were would have to get on gravel to get there it wasn't paved oh when I started riding with you all to Olathe we went across 143rd Street coming home and I think about that today because that yeah. road maybe I haven't been out there for a long time because it just got so frightening mm -hmm. it was too narrow and there was too much traffic yeah 199th sometimes too we came back that direction. Mm -hmm. And Bannister Road, I've seen the books where you rode on 95th Street or Bannister mm -hmm. Road, which now you can't do that anymore. So what were some of the towns out and about that you rode to? Lewisburg. We would ride to Gardner, mm -hmm. from Prairie Village. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Mm -hmm. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Lawrence. Lawrence. Mm -hmm. DeSoto. 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 Oh, yeah. Lewis, Lewisburg. Lee Summit. Yo, Lee Summit. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> we were women on the Denver. <laughs> well, but all we right, since we, we said that, why don't we switch and go, does 
kind of national. What are some of the national rides that you all did, and maybe not all of you at once, but I know you did a lot of rides together in different places around the United States, too. And I could start calling people's names, because I know What about I yours? You're, well, no, yeah. Alice, Alice, how long ago was it that you did the Lewis and Clark on a supported trip? Well, I hate to correct you, but I've never done it. Which, uh, it was the Oregon Trail. All right, see, I, 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 I was a history major, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I did the Oregon Trail, um, I don't know. I don't know. It was probably when I was still five foot two. Uh, <laughs> maybe ten years ago or so. Yeah. And where did that begin and end? Uh, well, it began at Westport here and ended in Oregon City. And I tell you, if you ever really want to feel the history, ride your bike, and I'm sure the Lewis and Clark Trail would be the same way, um, except you'd have to be in the water a lot. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. the Oregon Trail was absolutely fantastic because all the small towns were beginning to realize that they had a tourist attraction because the Oregon Trail went through there and they would have museums there. And so every place that you stopped, you had an uh, a history lesson, and uh, the people were so eager to share that history. And then here you are, peddling your ass, <laughs> along where the prairie <laughs> schooners used to go. No. Well, it, was, it was just wonderful, just a wonderful experience. And Colette, how about you and Jenny? I know you took some mm. monumental trips. Okay, well, the first one, the, my spring break, and I would, that was when you could load your bike and fly with it. And so I did several trips by myself. I went to Texas and Mississippi and New Mexico and Arizona by myself and camped and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then um, I started doing them. Um, people wanted to go with me. They <laughs> sacrificed. Because they were so worried about you. Break. No, well, yeah, there was yourself. one time there, were, there was, I was the only one in this campsite, and um, I was filthy dirty. It was Arizona, I think, and um, this guy said, well, you can come to, I have a shower if you want to take a shower um, <laughs> in my trailer. And I thought, okay. So uh, I knock on the door, and uh, he doesn't come for a while. Pretty soon he comes with a towel around him, and I'm like, okay. Um, uh, but he was, listening to, he was listening to NPR, and I thought, oh, Maybe he's a... Maybe you better stop there. Like, no, no, he didn't go any farther than that. He, he was listening to NPR, and I thought he must be a good liberal, and so I thought, I'll trust him. And sure enough, he didn't come and get me in the night either. <laughs> but I can tell you, I didn't sleep very good. <laughs> That's a great endorsement for NPR. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and of course, Chani and I, we did DAK a lot together. And so that was riding across Kansas. And then the other big one was, um, of course, what I've already said, that Wisconsin was a pretty big ride uh, with tandem. And, uh, oh, no, oh, the big one's France. France, France Belgium, and uh, the Netherlands. Big one, yeah. That's when uh, she uh, made it to college. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I've heard tell that on some of the BAK rides, you left out of Kansas City and you oh. rode to Colorado, and then you put all your stuff on the truck, and then you rode back home. Isn't that right? Some people did that. I didn't ever some do that. Some people did KAB. Did you do BAK both directions? I never did. Um, uh, I did. No, there's First four of us. I did. Yeah, I thought somebody had. Yeah. Well, well I didn't. You animal, carry. you. <laughs> <laughs> I had developed other friends. <laughs> Okay. She had them coming and going. Well, all right, then I'm going to make... Imo never brags about anything, so I'm going to pick on her. Uh, you and Alice have done some monumental rides. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all they're going to say. Yeah. Somebody what asked happened us, there stays. Ask us yesterday, said that, didn't you ever get tired of each other? Said, well, didn't you run out of something to talk about? But that's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we went down the we did the river ride from Itasca State Park to in Minnesota Louisiana, to Louisiana, and we rode down the 
East Coast together, from Maine to Florida. And then we've hiked on the Appalachian Trail, but that's not riding. <laughs> that's harder. <laughs> but Alice has done a lot more rides than that. I mean, she, you went across the United States. Went across the United States and down the West Coast, and uh, yeah. then basically just what you said, down the Mississippi and the Oregon Trail. And uh, uh, sometime I want to talk about one of the greatest stories that I have to tell about bicycling. But I'll say that to the end because you're supposed to say the best. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch, you watch the clock up there, and at about 20 after, are we going to give them any time to ask any questions? Sure. You all need time to ask any questions, or are you really hot to trot and get out of here tonight? <laughs> They're ambivalent. Okay. Uh, what were the road and traffic conditions like? 30 and 40 years ago and maybe even 25 years ago compared with today and you're all still riding today I remember one time we couldn't get across 95th Street it just we'd go out there and just wait forever then it got to where you just have to keep going farther and farther into the traffic yeah and 95th wouldn't be so bad but then you get to 103rd yeah as the city went and you know what else I meant to ask about? Um, all of us do live south of the river, don't we? I think. But did you ever do rides north of the river? Jenny Parkville. says Parkville. Parkville. Uh -huh. And Weston. And Weston. Weston. Oh, that's Weston. right. I, I went. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you still do a ride with a group of people mm -hmm. to Weston, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, we just did that over Labor Day weekend. Uh huh. So Tilly. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says, it? "Do you want to ride to? Do you want to ride to Weston?" Just yeah. And, and the older you get, get, the hills get yeah. steeper, bigger. bigger. <laughs> it well, seems like people. the traffic there is much more than it used to be. Well, yeah. I was just thinking in general. Don't you think There's the traffic so, everywhere in the yes. city is way so more than what we yeah. Yeah. were dealing with yeah. early yes. on? But so one of the things I notice about riding, um, I spend. Uh, some time in Arizona, for instance, Tucson, Arizona, and their streets are marked practically all their streets have bicycle lanes in them. And today, coming down here, I was going to see if there were, and I came from Olathe to here, if there were any streets that had bike lanes on them. There was no one that on the place that the place that I came and that's one of the things that I really think Kansas City needs to be aware of our trails are fantastic mm -hmm. but there's a whole bunch of difference between riding on trails and riding on a bicycle we want or uh, on uh, the road for one thing you have to have bicycle lanes for people to ride to work and you're not going to have people especially women you see a lot of men riding to work, uh, but women will not ride to work until there is a bike lane. And I think that's something that really needs to be promoted in Kansas City, actual markings on busy streets. And we um, do have more, yeah. but you have to go find them. Yeah, yeah that's right. The Northland has some good ones. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure. yeah, as you've developed new roads up there, it's in this part of the city, I think, where we've had to retrofit the older roads that it's a little bit more problematic. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, the other thing I think is kind of neat is, and I'm, I think I'm right about this, uh, some of the bike on, on road bike lanes now are the result of the riding that folks did back in the day and then gave their input as to which were the safer places to actually ride than, uh, than other roads. I mean, we kind of know where some of them are aren't so safe but otherwise you used to have to get in your car maybe you could do it on a bike I was lazy I'd get in my car and drive around looking for roads that I thought were were safe enough to ride on and wide enough and you know all the things that you look for depending upon the time of the day and everything um, can I ask a follow-up question about the traffic sure um, how did how did drivers was there any difference in the driver behavior to you on the road 30, 25 years ago than today? 
what I mean by that, by like honking or like cutting you off. Have you guys seen any change in cussing, whatever? Well, oh, there's much more, I mean, a uh, lot more traffic now. But what about was. driver behavior? Uh, I think they were, lights. they shared the road more with us. Yeah, I think they do a good Because job. there were so many, uh, I mean, so, you know, fewer uh, cars and cyclists. Mm -hmm. And I, probably cyclists. Mm -hmm. But I do think they're angrier today <laughs> than they were. Well, I think they're in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we slow them down. We're an imposition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Colette, you commuted for many, many years mm -hmm. to your job. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of would have some sort of feel about it. I didn't have any. I was going against the traffic and I was, there was no traffic where I was except for foxes and things like that. I was over in Kansas City, Fox. Kansas over there and uh, big mean dogs, mm -hmm. they come get you. But, but no people ever, <laughs> except for that one guy that was dead. He wasn't dead, he was passed out on a rock, but boy yeah. did you go up that hill fast after <laughs> that. Dropped me like, woo! <laughs> And we could have another session just on Colette and dogs. Uh, uh, true, we true. Yeah, we won't do that. Yeah. Um, another. But go ahead. People have. I think people are basically the same. I mean, I and and I can say bike, bicyclists aren't the best either. You know, in my opinion. I mean, they don't sometimes stop and look carefully enough. I don't know. And I'm just as much at fault. I've made mistakes. Many. I'm sure. But you so also, on your commute to work, which also was very hilly. Yeah. Um, she'd go over through Rosedale Park and then back up that hill on the other side of Southwest Boulevard. And 14th which is a, Street Hill. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a tough wow. one. Yeah. But, um, that's why you, I could carry her. Yeah. You chose your, you chose your routes though, too. You didn't, uh -huh. you didn't ride down Mission Road and then Oh, turn. no, no, no. But that's how I rode, it. went in the car because it was more pleasant. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know how else. I guess 18th Street is how you go. But I just like going down Puckett Road. I felt like it was in the country. And it, mm -hmm. and it was great um, to do this as a teacher because I could get my plans all made in that hour to work. <laughs> <laughs> I was so creative. <laughs> you would ride your back to home visits too, wouldn't you? That's what I, I did. Thank some, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. Go, yeah. But that ask, was Ask that just again, one Jenny. Um, when my, as a teacher doing home visits, um, you would, I mean, you would do home visits sometimes. Just that one year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us about it. I, I don't know the, what, I don't know, there's nothing. At the beginning of the school year, were you mandated to go visit all your families? That was that one year with New Stanley, I Stanley. think. Mm. The, the, they called it New Stanley and you were mandated to go visit all the parents. And that, of uh -huh. course, was going to cut into your bike riding time. Oh, it just made more biking time. Right, because you did it on your bike. <laughs> yeah. So when you pulled up to their door on your bicycle, that was kind of exciting yeah. for the kids. <laughs> yeah, it was exciting for the kids. Yeah, I'm sure the parents thought it was a bit odd. <laughs> that's okay. Um, the fashion industry has really captured bicycling. We're going to have a special session just from Bonnie about this later. But um, and we've got folks like me and Colette on the other end of the spectrum. But what, what back in the day, what did you wear to ride a bicycle? This is what I wore to school. These are probably four, uh, 30 years old. Oh my God. <laughs> and, but they were great to wear to school. And I taught in these too. They didn't send me home. <laughs> and, but we had a different top on. But. My mother would make my clothes. Oh, yeah. So we often, on the tandem, we would always wear the same outfit. We, I don't know why we didn't coordinate today our clothes, but we are wearing the same. We do have our same purses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody gave me a pattern because I couldn't afford like with pants and I got a pattern um, and I made out of swimsuit wear and you know it's a little thin so I made them oh, I made some for her I had to cut the pattern down really bitty and uh, yeah so yes we would wear the wear the same clothes on the tandem looking looking alike um, but all of my many 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 a bike t-shirts um, are now in a beautiful blanket that my mother made with, with the help of Sarah oh yeah and then oh, and I, I am still sewing one for, for the bikers <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a blanket made out of all my t-shirts and on the other side printed pictures of my mother and I riding our bikes for all these years. So yeah, How very cool. special blanket, yeah. Anybody so. else want to 
I wore cut-offs. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we just had t-shirts in my day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. any oh, other yeah. t-shirt. There was no such thing as a girl's jersey. Mm -mm. You had to wear men's clothes. And no helmet. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years I rode without a helmet mm -hmm. until they made helmets. And it was the bell helmets mm -hmm. that oh, yeah. looked like a pot. Upside. A bell. <laughs> yeah, and we really look quite chic in it. Yeah. You have I a thought. picture that shows. Yes, I do have a picture. That there's more helmet there than head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that. i get an older one. These are all bell helmets. Someone found this in uh, the This Is Lee Summit. Oh, yeah. I was for talking for that. one of the local papers. I remember that. And they said, oh my God, they're all biting. <laughs> and, uh, and we all have bell helmets. I mean, I don't know if you can see that. that that's that's the ugliest helmet you've ever seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you pass that around? Sure. The other one, too, the first one you showed? Yeah. Bell helmet. I, I prob. yes, go ahead. Do any of you guys have the skid lids that were open and have like the four pieces meeting in the middle? talking about my grandpa rode with one of those they were called mm -hmm. eventually because it's an open the leather side. ones the leather we helmets. call them a skid wood. it's like helmet material but it was just these four pieces that kind of oh, oh really meet at the top <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. that might even be beyond <laughs> our uh, yeah <laughs> age group well since i let uh or solicited the comment from imo about her cutoffs i really do have to defer to bonnie because she is an interior designer, so that's partly her excuse for understanding how things look nice together. But how do you piece all your outfits together for writing? Well, um, gosh, I've never thought about it, but I have to say, when I first started, I also wore the cutoffs. First organized ride, I had tube top, cutoff shorts, no helmet, and it was a Johnson County bike club ride, and I showed up, and they were so nice, and I did every classic rookie thing where you get your tennis shoe ties in the uh, <laughs> chain and I mean I had the whole club you know getting me through this ride and I thought I was doing so great and finally at the end um, you know I felt wonderful and the president of the group said now next time you come could you wear a helmet <laughs> <laughs> so they so, had helmets yeah and then you know after a few rides and cutoffs you know that's not a good thing <laughs> to ride in cutoffs that hurts <laughs> so, um, I don't know, um, I, I, you know, initially it was all men's clothing that was offered, so we were all wearing uh, just what we could piece together that looked decent for women, but it was really men's, and then now it's like so many options, and it's And pretty, so much money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's so expensive, for sure. Yeah. Okay, um, what about commuting to work or to run errands or to shop do you all did you do it do it then do you do it now oh yeah alice yeah i have uh panniers that uh are probably uh when panniers were first invented <laughs> and, and they can always tell whether it's my bike or not because of these real old faded yellow <laughs> panniers mm -hmm. but uh you know it may take several trips to go to the grocery store but I still go to the grocery store. As a matter of fact, oh, that's about you. what I ride now. 10, 15 miles, I really don't do anything that adventuresome anymore. But back to the helmets, I had an accident about three years ago. And uh, I, uh, another bicyclist ran into me. And I don't know what happened, but uh, I went off my bicycle and don't remember anything except I'm skidding along on the asphalt, and I'm thinking, boy, am I glad I had my helmet on. Because <laughs> you could just hear it go <laughs> along the way. And I, I don't know what would have happened to my face had I not had <laughs> that helmet on. <laughs> but that helmet was wonderful. Thank God you preserved your face. <laughs> yes. yes, thank God. <laughs> well, I, I'm, maybe everybody up here wants to... Uh, say something about this question which is pretty open I've ever had on a bike ride <clears throat> I had one of my favorite trips as four of us I'm always one 
and the other two are in Arizona, I think. We rode to BAK and met them halfway, camping all the way, and we'd stop in these little towns and we'd go in for coffee, and the men are out there drinking coffee, all kinds of men. You know where you ladies are going? And we'd say, no. Said, well. <laughs> and then we'd say, well, it's only a hundred miles to the next, next city. And they, you know, they were uh, just laughing. They thought, well, oh, they were scaring us to death. Of course, we knew exactly where we were going. <laughs> With I'm all along, she knew. <laughs> But it was fun. We met the BAK people and then rode back with them. And you were so that was fun. and you were tent camping. So yes, yeah. So if you just loaded up your panniers with food, no problem. You could just. I, I think we had little restaurants because we had little towns that I don't think we uh, had food with us, did we? Unless it was we snacks. Didn't cook, but you no, we didn't. Cook. <laughs> we did have a tent. So. And we weren't all in the same tent. I think we each had one tent, didn't we? Probably carrying your own stuff, right? Yeah. On our own bike. Yeah. Well, that was fun. I think we all used the tent a lot more. Uh, but then, you know, uh, when you get old enough, you get your Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> so you can afford a motel. <laughs> so we all motel. That's what you have now. to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paulette, we're not asking for all your secrets. No, uh, Jenny's going to tell it because we were on the same trip and we wrote the same things down. All right. Oh, my answer that one? Yeah. Well, I, I certainly have many, many of wonderful stories of um, passing on the touring with my friends in Ireland. And um, my first, I think I was very proud of my mother teaching me to ride after grad school. My friend and I did a loop around in Pennsylvania. And I was just so proud of myself with maps, maps when people look at maps without the phone and have a phone to look at. And being able to um, identify the roads to ride on and just a friend and I bringing our camp, our tents and camping and making a week of riding. So, um, but I think uh, one of both of our, one of our favorite stories is we were riding in France and we had gotten to our destination and every town we got to you just find a um, hotel or a little bed and breakfast or what have you. And the next town I think was about 20 miles away. And so, when you're on your bike, you can't just jump on your bike and ride another 20 miles at the end of the day. But there was a World Cup going on. That's why. Well, there, there, there was, was a World a Cup and there was a race, some car race thing. There was two things going on. So was everything was full. And so we had gone into the grocery store and the owner made a few phone calls. His friend came over and myself and I think Ed, my stepdad, we raced out to this one last place and it was full. We followed him in the car and we followed on our bikes as he drove slowly. So we followed him. <laughs> on our bikes. We came back, nothing available, and the owner says, well, I've called my wife, yeah. bring your bikes into this grocery store, and he has loaded up his car, I think probably more wine than food, <laughs> and how did we get there? We oh, his friend drove us. His friend drove us with him, and so we drove out to this countryside house. His wife um, had already started preparing for our arrival, so it was um, my mother and, and stepfather and myself and Mary. Mary, right? Um, and we showered and got ready. In the meantime, they grilled. They don't really grill there, but since we were American, I thought they, they, they grilled for us. And, and gave us Jack Daniel. Well, <laughs> Jack Daniels, yeah. And then we had a lot of wine, and then we ate, and the French eat very late, and in multiple, multiple courses. And so uh, much later into the evening, um, Jean Francois was his name, rides in with my helmet on, rosy cheeks on a bicycle into the living room. Um, and I think after that, not after wine, we had Calvados. 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 So after that, we had that, that. Yeah, that he had put up because we were in the apple part of the Oh, yes. France. Yes. And so, um, needless to say, the next day, I think we cut our bike ride a little bit shorter. I think we only rode 20 about 20 miles, miles that day. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, I think the story behind that, I talk about this a lot, is that when you're on your bicycle, you have to trust in the human spirit. And if you had been in a car, you would say, oh, let's just get in our car and, and go to the next town. Um, and so it's, you know, I think sometimes we forget the beauty of human kindness. If you watch the news too much, you're, you know, you're fearful to go out your front door. And just um, the, the kindness that people are willing to open up their doors and share their culture with you and just immerse yourself. You get to do that when you're on a bicycle. And every time I've left the country, I just, I find that to be true all the time. They're curious about you 
and you're curious about them and, and you get to know one another and it's really and especially if you are touring independently by yourselves sure. it right. forces you to be amongst the locals and get to, right. you know you get to know them because as you know or if you're by yourself you have to talk to somebody sometime <laughs> you know and uh, when I was on my own there would always be these retired people in their camps and they would invite me over for dinner and they would give me their uh, what the grapefruit they haul back these grapefruits from Texas and they all had these grapefruit they didn't want to put me in the van and take me up the hill, and, you know. Yeah, yeah it was great. I just yeah. got the high sign. I thought we were good till five o'clock, but I've been no. told that we oh, have to yeah. stop oh, now. Yeah. So, so uh, Alice had the the best story oh, saved until well, the end. It's my best story. All right, that's good. <laughs> so I'm saving it till the last. But uh, I agree with Colette. If you really, it depends on what your aim is for bicycling and when you go with the group you should have basically the same aim. One, one group may want to go as many miles as they can. They don't want to stop and see anything. They don't want, you know, they think you will go from A to B. When there are just two of you, like for instance, my husband and I bicycled in Australia and we were totally contained and and uh, planned on sleeping in a tent and so forth and so on. You have so much more chance, you're approachable because there are only two of you. Whereas if there are six or seven of you, people are kind of shy to come up to you. Well, here's my story. Um, it was in 1996 and um, we were in New Zealand and uh, we, uh, my husband went around uh, in a camp and said, my wife has, has coffee in the morning. Does anyone have any coffee? So I said, yeah, come on over and we'll fix you coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that we were going to their real home in uh, northern New Zealand. Every time I tell this story, I almost want to cry. Uh, uh, but he was in World War II and he was on an island which he shared with Americans. And the British had actually just kind of ignored them and uh, they were on their own and their food supply was rather low. And he was a truck driver. This guy was a truck driver in the service and he would go over into the American section and the Americans always had so much food and they always treated him very nicely. And he said he'd just never forgotten how wonderful the Americans were. And he said, uh, I've always wanted to do something for some Americans. And he said, you know, I am, I don't know how old he was, probably 80 something rather. And he said, I better start doing it and I want to do it with you and your husband. So he took us in, in the car to some very, uh, inaccessible areas we wouldn't have been able to go to in New Zealand. Now, in New Zealand, the price of gas is horrendously high. And we're driving, and uh, we probably drove 200 miles that day. His, I'm in the back seat with his, with his uh, wife, and my husband's up front with him. And uh, uh, the wife starts crying because and I said, well, what's the matter? And she said, you know, I'm passing by my parents' house and we've never been able to afford to drive this since we were married in 50, for 50 years. So this is the sacrifice that this guy had made. And he took us around and oh, I was so proud of the U.S. of A. <laughs> it was, it was just, a wonderful thing, and I think that's the greatest thing that ever happened to me on my bicycle. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful story. Mm -hmm.